Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today I want to show you this rapier I just finished, which is our German rapier, which is a piece of stunning beauty, and I'll tell you all about it. Stay tuned. All right, so our German rapier is a replica of one that's in the Deutsches Klingen Museum. Uh, this dated to around the year 1600. Uh, the original was made in Solingen, uh, Germany, by Johannes Mumm who is a famous uh, swordsmith and cutler uh, at the time. This rapier uh, is really interesting for a couple reasons. First, instead of having a ring guard on the outer guard, it has these two posts, or a post and an arm, that protect the hand. Uh, this is simply stylistic. Uh, they occurred both ways. In fact, there are several different ways you could construct sweeps to protect the hand, uh, but this one uh, is fairly iconic uh, with this post and this arm with another sweep uh, that protects the outside of the hand. On the inside, uh, we have four arms protecting the inside of the hand. Now, the details on this piece are really gorgeous. Right? So it's all acanthus leaf, uh, detail, and then on the pommel, these leafs on chiseled panels uh, with chiseled grooves. And you can see uh, the whole way this thing is made. As you look at the piece, as I turn it, you'll see the ways that the symmetry uh, is mirrored uh, by different elements as you look at it from different angles, which is all part of the beauty uh, of these rapiers, wire-bound hilt with braided Turks heads uh, on the grip here. Uh, the blade on this is stiff diamond section, 34 and three quarters inch long. Let's see, this thing is fish hook, pointy sharp out there. It's nauseatingly sharp. And you can see here that when we grind these blades, we try and grind it pretty much all the way down to an edge. So it has a very minimal secondary bevel on these things, which is what we see on the originals. And out toward the point, there's a little bit more of a secondary bevel. That's just the way it, it works when you sharpen these things uh, to a very fine point. But beautiful, very rigid uh, diamond section blade uh, on this guy. So this piece weighs about two and a quarter pounds, which is right in the middle of what we expect rapiers from this period uh, to weigh. And got a point of balance here that is probably two and a half inches from the Ricasso, uh, which makes it handle very well. There's excellent point control on this thing. You can really uh, control where you hit, uh, disengages, work well. We make this either with a sharp blade or with your choice of training blades on these. We can really work with you to get the dynamics of that weapon to work in a way that suits your style of fencing or your aesthetic preferences. Uh, you can get it with a soft leather sheath, or uh, you can also get it with a matching carrying dagger that has these same decorative elements. Again, that can be either sharp or blunt. I'm pretty happy with this one. I think it turned out pretty well, and uh, you should check it out with the links uh, provided here. Thank oh you. yeah, one other thing. If this sword looks familiar and you liked the movie Elizabeth the Golden Age, uh, this was the rapier that Sir Walter Raleigh uh, was using in that. So we don't often uh, work with Hollywood uh, because it's a pain in the butt, <laughs> but for that movie, we did provide this rapier. So you may have seen it before on there. All right, thank you.